Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, um, in the previous class, we started with uh, Gauss Divergence Theorem and we also looked into the statement of Gauss Divergence Theorem and how we can convert a surface integral into a volume integral and uh, um, then a volume integral back into the surface integral. So, whichever is given, uh, if uh, in your question, if, if you are asked to evaluate the other one, you can use the Gauss Divergence Theorem. And uh, since we have only two more lectures left, uh, today we will start with uh, one example on Gauss Divergence Theorem and then we move to our uh, final uh, theorem uh, in uh, vector calculus which is basically uh, Stokes theorem. And unfortunately, we do not have any more lectures left, so um, it, uh, we, we can, may not be able to practice examples from the integral calculus section or even from the introduction of the vector calculus part. But uh, we will try to solve at least uh, two or three examples on uh, Stokes theorem just to make the concepts uh, clear. So, um, today we will start with uh, one example on Gauss divergence theorem. So, um, in the statement uh, from the Gauss divergence theorem, uh, you remember that uh, you can write uh, um, if f is any vector, uh, vector function, then you can write volume integral over v divergence of. Uh, uh, divergence of let us say our vector function is f, then in that case uh, um, I can write divergence of f dv equals to surface integral and uh, here you have uh, curl of f dot n ds. So, this is basically our uh, uh, I am sorry, so this one is just f dot n ds. So, this is basically our Gauss divergence theorem and um, uh, with the help of Gauss divergence theorem, you can be able to convert or if, if you are given to evaluate a surface integral, you can just convert it into a volume integral and the things will become very straightforward. So, um, we will uh, we will solve one example uh, based on this uh, based on this uh, Gauss divergence theorem. So, the first example is for today. So, the first example is uh, let us say by converting by converting uh, the surface integral into a volume integral into a volume integral uh, evaluate evaluate uh, surface integral over s uh, x cube dy dz plus y cube dz dx plus z cube dx dy, where s is the surface of x square plus y square plus z square equals to 1. So, this is basically our uh, sphere and uh, we have to convert the surface integral which is need which is uh, to be evaluated on the surface of the sphere uh, into a volume integral and then we have to calculate the uh, calculate the value of the surface integral so um, we know that uh, from gauss divergence theorem we know that uh, so we have learnt this formula so there are like uh, two or three expressions for Gauss divergence theorem and uh, um, one of them is uh, this one, another one is with uh, dx dy dy dz and dz dx form. So, we are going to write that form here. So, by divergence theorem we know that uh, surface integral over s f 1 dy dz plus f 2 dz dx plus f 3 dx dy equals to volume integral over v, we will have f 1, uh, we have del f 1 del x. So, this is a bit bigger bracket del f 2 by del y and then we have del f 3 by del z and then here we have 
dv so which is basically dx dy dz so this is the required um, how to say form in terms of uh, cartesian coordinates like x y and z so now we can compare so you see this surface integral here and this surface integral here uh, if we compare these two forms then in that case our f1 is x cube f2 is y cube and f3 is z cube right so we have where v is the uh, where, so here v is the volume enclosed by the surface s so we have f1 xyz as x cube f2 xyz as a y cube and f3 x y z as z cube since f is a function of uh, x x only y f2 is a function of y only and f3 is a function of z only it makes our life a lot easier because it may happen that here f1 could be a, a product of uh, x y z and their power and things like that so then it would have become a little bit uh, complicated, but since here everything is just like a where function of one variable only, then this is a fairly simple example to do. So now, uh, by the divergence theorem, let me name this equation as one. So from equation one, uh, if we convert the surface integral, if we convert the surface integral into a volume integral, then it will take this form like in equation one, and in equation one v is the volume enclosed by this sphere s which is given here and uh, we have to evaluate del f1 by del x so if i do the partial derivative then this will be del f1 by del x 3x square del f2 by del y 3y square and del f3 by del z 3z square all right so let's substitute all these values here so, from 1 and let me call this equation as 2. So, this, this is as, as 2. So, from 1 and 2, we have volume integral over V del f 1 by del x square. So, basically 3 x square plus y square plus z square dx dy dz. Now, this is basically uh, volume integral and uh, if we substitute um, if we substitute this as uh, um, x square plus y square plus z square as uh, here as 1 so then in that case this will become 1 dx dy d z and this is volume integral so 1 and then dx dy dz is basically dv so that that's the volume element so i can write it as dv all right and uh, this means that uh, we are basically doing uh, or calculating the volume of that sphere right so if you if if your vector function is 1 like in this case and um, I mean not vector function so if if your vector uh, if your function overall is 1 in a way then in that case here this this means that you are actually doing a volume uh, or calculating the volume of the given surface so that's that's what this mean and uh, here in our case the given surface is a sphere of unit radius so in that case uh, we can write 4 by or um, what we can do is uh, instead of substituting there is another another method which we can follow so what we can do instead of substituting this one I can substitute just to make things a little bit more clear I can substitute x equals to uh, r cos theta cos phi y equals to r sin theta sin phi and uh, R, r cos theta sin phi and uh, z equals to r sin theta then in that case this will be x square plus y square so cos theta cos theta cos square theta will get out and then this will be cos square phi plus sin square phi 
and uh, then that will be 1 and then it will be r square sin square theta yes. So, this is correct. So, we substitute x equals to r cos theta cos phi y equals to r cos theta sin phi and z equals to uh, r sin theta. So, if I substitute all these values here then in that case this will be uh, r square times r square sin theta and then we will have dr d theta d phi all right. So, now for this v what we can do is we can write the range for r. So, r is basically varying from 0 to 1, theta is varying from 0 to pi and phi is varying from 0 to 2 pi and uh, if we evaluate this integral then this will be r to the power 4 r to the power 4 sin theta dr d theta and d phi. So, we can integrate uh, because they are not they are not uh, product uh, they are not uh, in a way involving theta and r together. So, we can integrate with respect to r for the integral uh, with respect to r and we can integrate for theta for the integral with respect to theta. So, that means this will reduce to uh, integral r running from 0 to 1 uh, integral theta running from 0 to 2 pi. So, first we will integrate with respect to phi. So, this will be uh, sorry theta. So, this will be integral from 0 to 2 pi d phi d phi and here we will have dr d theta. So, this will give us 2 phi uh, 2 pi. So, this is 3 times 2 pi and then we integrate sin theta. So, it will be cos theta and uh, cos theta and uh, theta is from 0 to 2 pi. So, then we will have uh, cos pi as uh, minus 1. So, this will give us a 2 and uh, when we integrate r to the power 4 then this will give us 1 by 5. So, ultimately it will be 12 by 5 pi. So, you see initially we had a very uh, how to say complicated uh, expression where it is not that much complicated, but still we had to calculate the surface integral. So, in the question itself it says that convert the surface integral into a volume integral. So, if we are asked to convert the surface integral into a volume integral we just have to use this divergence theorem and in that divergence theorem if you compare then this is basically our f 1, this is basically f 2 and this is basically f 3 and on the right hand side of that uh, divergence theorem we had to calculate the partial derivatives. So, we calculate the parts we calculated the partial derivatives we substituted these partial derivatives here and then we are just substituting taking the help of a spherical polar coordinate system. So, we substitute r equals to cos theta cos phi y equals r, x equals to r cos theta cos phi y equals to r cos theta sin phi and z equals to r sin theta. So, the volume element will be um, uh, will be uh, dr d theta d phi multiplied by um, r sin theta and uh, then we have uh, here uh, r square basically. So, we, we, the, so this is this is our basically volume element and that is the function what, what we are getting uh, from this x square plus y square plus z square. So, altogether this is r to the power 4, this is sin theta dr d theta d phi and the limit for r is 0 to 1, for theta is 0 to pi and phi is 0 to 2 pi. Then when you integrate you obtain this integral, uh, the value of this uh, surface integral. So, that is how we use the Gauss divergence theorem. So, whenever you are given a surface integral, uh, you can use Gauss divergence theorem to convert it into a volume integral and it will become very easy because when you are evaluating surface integral, uh, in, so, in some cases you may have a parallel pipette or cube or, or, or a cube and then in that case you have to do the surface integral on, on every um, surface. However, uh, if you convert that surface integral into a volume integral then the life will become much easier. Then in that case we just have to um, get the limits for x, y and z and do that calculate that divergence and uh, hopefully the whole thing will become very easy. So, this is uh, uh, one, uh, one of the uh, examples motivated from Gauss divergence theorem and uh, now we move to uh, our final theorem which is basically Stokes theorem. So, I am going to write the statement first. So, mm. 
Stokes theorem. So, let me have a look at the statement in my lecture note. So, the Stokes theorem says let S be a piece wise smooth open surface bounded by by a piece wise simple closed curve C and let f x y z be a continuous vector function which has continuous first order partial derivatives in a region of space which contains S in its interior then line integral f dot d r equals to surface integral curl of f dot n d s or we can write it as where n is a unit outward drawn normal. All right. So this is and so this is the required statement and of course s la so if if you are walking along the curve c then your surface s must lie on the left hand side so that's how you choose the curve c that the orientation is always uh, in the anti clockwise direction so that's uh, that's the property of this uh, curve c and n is outward drawn normal so if you are uh, walking uh, in the anti clockwise direction then your surface will always lie on the left that's how we mean by uh, closed uh, that's what we mean by this uh, piecewise smooth uh, uh, bounded by a simple closed curve uh, piecewise sim uh, simple closed curve c and um, n is actually the outward drawn normal on the surface s and uh, uh, then in that case you can write the so line integral f dot dr as uh, surface integral curl of f dot n ds. So, this is also a very important theorem uh, in vector calculus and also in, uh, in, in, in applied several other branches of applied mathematics where, um, so, uh, where um, we, uh, we, we take help of this theorem. Uh, so, for example, uh, in uh, partial differential equations or even in fluid mechanics uh, these theorems have a very wide um, application. So, um, this is the required uh, statement and uh, we can also write um, this theorem in a Cartesian form. So, I have it uh, in my uh, lecture notes here. So, if I write it as a Cartesian form, then in that case uh, we can write um, we can write it as uh, let so, uh, alternatively or a different form basically. So, alternative or a different form or a different form. So, basically let f is a given vector function which has three components f 1 i, f 2 j and f 3 k and uh, let n the outward drawn normal the outward drawn normal makes angle 
alpha, beta and gamma with positive directions of x, y and z axis. Then we can write our normal n, then we can write our normal n as uh, cos alpha i plus cos beta j and cos gamma k. And uh, we know that Karloff f, uh, so Karloff f, if f has three components, then Karloff is, f is basically a cross product which can be determined by that uh, uh, de uh, determinant uh, i j k f 1 del del x del del y del del z and then f 1 f 2 f 3 and then we calculate the determinant. So, we basically take a dot product with this uh, normal n which is given here. So, on the left hand side basically we will have uh, line integral. So, therefore, therefore f 1 i plus f 2 j plus f 3 k dot product with dr, dr is basically d x i plus d y j plus d z k equals to surface integral. So, here we have curl of f. So, if we calculate the curl of f um, or let us just write curl of f dot n. So, n is cos alpha i cos beta j plus cos gamma k. So, now we can calculate the curl of f easily and then we take the dot product here also we take the dot product and therefore, the whole thing will reduce to and here it will be surface integral del f 3 del y minus del f 2 del z times cos alpha plus del f 1 by del z minus del f 3 by del x cos beta plus del f 2 by del x minus del f 1 by del y cos gamma. d of s. So, this is the required uh, form of uh, Gauss device uh, sorry Stokes theorem in the Cartesian form. So, um, like um, uh, Green's theorem or Gauss divergence theorem, uh, Stokes theorem also have uh, also has very uh, wide application in vector calculus and uh, we will practice a few examples uh, motivated from uh, Stokes theorem and uh, then we will probably close the close this topic. Uh, so, let me just try to find out. Okay. So, here I have some examples. So, example 1 I guess. So, first example is prove that line integral of r dot dr equals to 0. So, we have to show that uh, uh, so that line integral of uh, this uh, r is our given vector function in this case. So, f is basically r and uh, line integral over this curve c where c is again any uh, piece wise uh, smooth curve closed curve of course uh, dot d r equals to 0. So, we can write this as a surface integral curl of r dot n d s. So, dot n n is basically the unit auto drawn normal and uh, we have to calculate the curl of r right. So, curl of r if you calculate then you will be able to see that this is 0 because r is x i plus y j plus z k and if you calculate curl of r then this will be 0. So, surface integral over s 0 dot n d s is equals to basically 0. 
So, this is how we uh, use the Gauss uh, Stokes theorem. Next, um, we can apply sim uh, we can we can show that uh, the a similar type of result. So, show that. So, there are several show that type of problems which you can also solve with this uh, with the help of Stokes theorem. So, show that line integral over the curve c phi gradient of phi dot d r equals to 0. So, our given function f is basically phi times gradient of phi. So, here we can have surface integral phi uh, sorry line integral c and uh, gradient of phi dot d r equals to surface integral of uh, curl of phi grad phi dot n d s. So, now we have to calculate curl of phi uh, times uh, gradient of phi. So, if we do that then in that case the, uh, using the formula from vector calculus this can be written as phi times curl of gradient of phi plus gradient of phi curl with gradient of phi gradient of phi cross product with gradient of phi dot n d s. So, now this is gradient of phi cross product with gradient of phi. So, this is basically 0 because a cross a is 0 and phi times curl of uh, gradient of phi is also 0. So, this is also 0 and uh, this is 0 by definition. So, ultimately we have this as 0, this as 0. So, the integrand is 0 and therefore, 0 vector dot n is um, again 0. So, that means this whole thing will reduce to 0 dot d s because this is 0 vector, this is 0 vector. So, 0 vector dot with uh, n cap is a 0 uh, scalar and then we integrate uh, over surface integral s let us say. So, this is ultimately 0. So, you see um, in we did not have to go through any complicated uh, calculation or something, we just had to use uh, Stokes theorem that means uh, you can convert your line integral into a surface integral and then the rest of the uh, simplification is pretty much straightforward. So, uh, these were the two proof that example that we solved today, but in our next class we will consider at least one or two examples uh, motivated from the Stokes theorem where we might need to verify the Stokes theorem. and. Uh, we will start such examples in our next class. So, I thank you for your attention today and I uh, will see you in your next class.